okay. It's feel like Christmas, man. I feel like Christmas. Just got some blades back from the sharpeners today. And this is something that's always exciting when you get these back and you're like, man, I miss these blades. And here they come, they're in the mail. So this one in particular is for the um, Capex, uh, I believe. That's for the Festool Capex. Uh, this is actually not for mine. I don't have a Capex. This is for somebody that I know that wanted me to sharpen. He's a homeowner that uh, doesn't have, you know, he's not a cabinet maker, but he has a Capex. But I think I sent these out maybe it's been probably a month since I sent these, maybe three weeks. The thing is, is that uh, this COVID thing has kind of slowed everything down. All the business that this company does, the sharpening, it definitely slows them down. So this whole thing would have been uh, back to me much quicker uh, had it been normal times. Looks like they have a bit of a coating right here, right? So this is going to protect that um, those teeth. What's nice, when they package them up too, they separate them and all that stuff. But with this coating on here, with this rubberized coating, that's great. So what I do is I clean this off and I put on my um, lube, uh, my Teflon lube that I spray on. I put on this stuff here after this is all cleaned up I just take a, a damp cloth I put a little um, a little rubbing alcohol on here and uh, get it cleaned up but this is what you want you want these blades to be nice and um, perfect so so that's of course my ripping blade my glue line rip blade this is my um, this is actually a weird blade this is a 44 tooth Jaseda. So this was my very first blade that I had with my Delta contractor saw. And I got this from a um, uh, Jaseda tools. I don't think they're still around, uh, but they made some really good uh, stuff. You know, I have router bits from them, but I'm not really sure if they're still around. I don't think so. I think Infinity might have bought them. I could be wrong. But uh, anyways, they... Um, this is actually a really good blade. So uh, general purpose, 44 tooth. So it's a little unusual because uh, most of the time you think 40 teeth, 44 teeth is a little unusual. And these boxes, I don't throw away so that when I take these, the next time I send these out, I already have the boxes. Just makes it a lot easier. And I always keep my receipts for um, this type of thing and I write down what it costs each time so that I know like okay if you send these out and you're spending um, all sorts of money and you can buy these things you know uh, without it costing as much money you know at some point you say alright well I'll just buy it again uh, but alright so this particular blade um, I'm not really sure they called me on, on one of the blades I thought it was the chop master that had broken teeth so I'm going to take a look at this. Uh, anyways, they said one of them had like 14 broken teeth sharpened. Uh, but let me check this guy out. So this is the Chop Master. I believe this was the one they said was had some broken teeth. Not broken, chipped. I went ahead and told them just to sharpen it. Don't fix the teeth because they said it would cost more money to fix the teeth than it would just to buy a new blade. So I said, forget about it, scrap that. Just sharpen the blade and you know what? I'll bet you, you don't even notice that there's some teeth in there that were chipped. So this one normally is just sits on my radial arm saw. Uh, I don't, you know, since it was, you know, kind of damaged or whatever, I just put it on my radial arm saw and didn't think twice about it. You know, the thing cut like butter, but you know, you get to a point where you're needing to sharpen blades. I like to get every blade I have that's dull and put it in a the box like this and send it out. So, um, so yeah, so two blades, two um, 96 teeth and 80 teeth. These are 12s, uh, but they go by teeth. 
counts. So the higher the tooth count, the more expensive it is to uh, sharpen these guys. So these guys there, plus this one, plus this one, and this guy here. All that with the shipping back to me, it was a total of a hundred and uh, uh, let's see, eighty-five bucks, something like that. So it was like thirty bucks to ship it, and the rest was sharpening charges. So it cost me thirty dollars to ship it to them. So you can add thirty bucks to that. So it was a total of about two twenty with shipping total. So two hundred and twenty bucks to get these guys sharpened. Do that do the figuring. This guy here is a fifty, you know, sixty dollar um, blade, depending on where you buy it. It's about sixty bucks. This guy here you can't get, so you know you have a blade that you can't replace. You know, is it better than the Forest Woodworker? No, but it's definitely nice, and so and I it, it's got sentimental value since this was my very first blade. Uh, I don't want to get rid of this, so I would just as soon keep it sharp and ready to go. And, uh, I, you know, I love having good blades. Um, so those two blades, so that blade right there is considered to be probably a hundred dollar blade, the Jaseda one, maybe a little bit more. So that, those two blades, 160 bucks. This guy here is 130, um, ish. So, um, 130 ish and you've got plus tax. So that's actually about 140 with tax. Um, this one here is about another 175 bucks. So when you combine all these guys up, um, you're well over the price that it costs to, um, you know, get these guys sharpened. But you have to ask yourself, at what point, you know, is it better to just buy it? The rule of thumb for me is I like to send out as many blades as I possibly can because it costs less money to ship them in bulk than it does one item. So that's always something I've always considered, something I want to do is send out as many as you can. It'll save you money on the shipping. Add add all this stuff up. Okay. So well let's take that guy right there. So that's 175 bucks plus 140. Now I'm kind of adding tax, you know, give or take. Um, plus the um Jaseda, we'll call that a hundred plus the 64 for the glue line rip with the um, tax, plus the Oshlin. I don't know how much that costs. I, and I think, I want to say it's about 50, but I could be wrong. All right, so that's 529. And we just got them shipped, sharpened, and everything uh, for 220 total. So that leaves 309. Still, so if we were to buy these again, is you know, it's going to cost you that much more money to buy them new, and you're ultimately going to get about the same blade when you get them back from these guys. They're sharpening it almost to where it's brand new. Um, you know, don't let this fool you. Whenever you see this, don't think that's a bad sign, because the finish on these type of blades come off. They just do, and especially when they don't have a lot of um, space between the um, gullets. Um, then you definitely can have that, you know, grinder take off some of the finish on those. Whereas these ones, you don't notice it, right? Because it's like, there's no finish on them, so it doesn't really show up. Um, and this one, same thing goes. If this came back and had finish taken off, which you can see it kind of gets a little bit light in these areas. If I were to scrub these, it would probably come off. That's how fragile this stuff is. Here's the breakdown here. So it's 182. Um, okay, uh, freight freight was 23, so it costs them less than it does me to send it. Um, 12 inch, so it was 33 dollars to sharpen the uh, Freud 96 tooth, and it says tips replaced. Wow, that blade! I'm gonna tell you something. That blade. That isn't old at all. Uh, that guy has only been in use for maybe, I don't know, four months. That is not impressive for that blade. Maybe five months. 
Um, okay. 12 inch 80 tooth chop master. That was 30 bucks. Since it's got less teeth, it costs a little less than the 96 tooth. Extra top grind, extremely dull blade. If you let your blades go too much, they give you a $7 charge to, I guess, help. <laughs> uh, 1044 tooth, that's the uh, Jaseda, that's $27. So a 10 inch 44 tooth is 27 bucks. The 30 tooth 10 inch, 23 bucks. And uh, let's see here. The 10 inch 60 tooth, okay, so that was $27 for the, um, the Oshelin. Yeah, so that's the price breakdown there. Yeah. So, uh, this is from Forest Manufacturing. This is the company that makes the Forest Woodworker Blades. So if you have Forest Blades, you know of them. Or maybe you just know of them because you've heard of them. But um, this is, uh, they're in New Jersey. And um, they're great because they actually sharpen instead of just sell the blades. You can send them router bits, joiner knives, anything. They'll sharpen them as long as they're woodworking related. I don't know if they'll sharpen... Uh, uh, like block plane irons, that's the that type of stuff. I mean, most people do that themselves. But I know router bits, and I know joiner knives, planer knives, um, all that stuff that usually is done by a pro, they'll do. And if you have carbide uh, joiner knives, that's really good to have them sharpened because those are going to be pretty tough to sharpen on your own. Found that. So I just wanted to show you this. It's the process of having a cabinet shop. You always got to deal with this type of stuff. And so I'll keep this. And then the next time I go to um, do this, uh, sometimes I'll even I just put this guy right here just so I know, you know. What All right, now if you get your saw blades back from the sharpener, uh, you're going to realize that it's kind of nasty. It's coated with um, basically just what looks like gunk coating so you're going to want to clean this before you use it and um, i'm going to just going to show you what i do first thing is i'm going to take out this blade as well because <clears throat> i was going to use this blade for all my ripping but just because the um, full kerf here i would rather not use that so i would rather use the thin kerf Might as well save the wood dust and everything. So we'll see how the two things. We'll see how the sharpening went on this, and uh, we'll get it cleaned up. But we'll also save the dust. See the difference in the the kerf is a decent amount. It's not 50%, but it's pretty close. So you're going to save that amount in the uh, amount of dust that you create when you use it. Okay, now to take this coating off, you just peel it off and it's just, sometimes it comes off easy and sometimes it doesn't. Um, it helps to go with the angle of the teeth, but sometimes it doesn't peel off very easily. But there's just a residue on here that you know, my experience is that if you don't take this stuff off, it just collects dust, um, sawdust. Now, as far as cleaning goes, it's pretty simple. I'm using gloves, though, uh, because the, co the uh, cleaning agent is pretty good. So, um, basically just pieces of uh, flooring that I use for my knees. And I'm just going to spray my um, CMT. I have a video on using this actually, but you know, check this out. It's pretty cool. Just going to spray a light coating on, nothing heavy, and let that um, sit in there. I'm just going to use this to agitate it in here. And I don't need to let it soak. We're not taking off any pitch or anything like that. All we're doing is removing that film that's on there. And then do the other side. You can kind of see it. 
See how it's kind of a, you can see it's like greasy. All right. And now you probably could go in into each gullet and clean that too. Um, if you really want it to be thorough, just go in there and just kind of wipe it. All right. This is some good stuff right here. Kind of the very end of this can, so hopefully I have enough to get this guy. All right, so I put it on the whole thing, and make sure you get it in the gullets. So now, you just buff it and go in the direction of the teeth. So, when you have it like this, counterclockwise. Once you do this, you might find that you need to do another coat, depending on you know, how much you put on. But that is nice. It really will make a difference in your operation and it's perfect ready to go so now I can put it on my saw and start using it peel these things out bought this not too long ago and it's the first time I had it sharpened but I just noticed when you start using a, a saw blade that's you can tell when it starts to um, drag a little bit when you're ripping or whatever you're doing using it, you notice that it's starting to drag. It's usually a sign that it, either it's really dirty or it's got lots of um, grime on it or it's dull, one of the two. And sometimes they, if you get a lot of grime on it, like pitch, um, it'll actually dull real fast because of that. So um, you can also do your uh, table saw uh, table if you want to. That's a good thing to do. Um, And I put it on the out feed too. There's no reason why you shouldn't. And wherever you see that you have drag from the crosscut sleds or anything, you'd be surprised at how much better your stuff can slide with this stuff applied. It's crazy. It really works. Go right over your throat plate. And you could do all the surface. Here you could do the table on the side. Um, anything. But really think about the wood surfaces too. Not just the cast iron. The wood, um, you have a lot of drag on this, so if you spray this, you're going to have a lot of freedom when you slide stuff. It's going to slide a lot easier. All right, so this thing's ready to go. 